Temperatures on Earth have been increasing rapidly since the 1800s. The Arctic is warming three times as fast as the rest of the planet due to sea ice loss, a phenomenon known as Arctic amplification. Arctic amplification is driving sea ice sheet melt, which contributes to sea level rise. The amount of sea ice, particularly in late summer, has decreased to levels not seen in the past thousand years. As sea ice decreases, it becomes thinner and more vulnerable to melting. When the white sea ice melts entirely, the dark land or ocean surfaces absorb more energy from the sun, leading to additional heating. Oceans are already absorbing energy from the sun and greenhouse gases, which increase the surface water temperature. Water temperature is influenced by warmer water coming in from north flowing rivers. These regions are experiencing increased rainfall due to the effects of Arctic amplification, which contributes to the increased river flows into the Arctic. Melting glaciers and ice sheets of fresh water further reduce the salt content of the ocean water. These rivers carry fresh water to a salty ocean, which changes the proportion of fresh and salt water. The balance between fresh and salt water in the Arctic Ocean is critical. Changes in the balance can result in less oceanic mixing between the layers, which means less nutrients and oxygen available for marine life. Currently, one third of the world's oceans are overfished. Warmer oceans will lead to a reduction in existing fish populations. A growing body of research shows that the rapid Arctic warming is contributing to changes in mid-latitude climate and weather, exacerbating the impacts of extreme weather events like flooding, heat waves, and forest fires. Scientists are studying the many factors that influence Arctic climate. Researchers are investigating how the changes in the Arctic climate will affect climate in other parts of the world. Scientists study data collected by satellites and at ground stations, as well as historical records. This project uses data collected from tree ring records along the Yenisei River to reconstruct the amount of water flowing into the Arctic Ocean. The Yenisei River originates in Mongolia, flowing north for over 2,000 miles along the border between eastern and western Siberia before reaching the Kara Sea in the Arctic Ocean. Our journey begins by traveling to the Siberian boreal forest to collect tree cores within the tributaries of the Yenisei River. The goal is to create a hydro reconstruction of the river to better understand the feedback mechanisms of how fresh water flowing from this river is contributing to the Arctic amplification process. We start upstream in the upper basin of the Yenisei River, an area characterized by high elevation grasslands. We are looking for trees in extreme growing conditions on steep slopes, trees that record information about precipitation and temperature conditions. From there, we travel north along the river to collect data from trees high within the steep rocky outcrops closer to the Arctic Circle. Back in the lab, we prep our samples by sanding our tree cores to expose the rings. We date each ring and measure the ring widths, which gives us discharge or the amount of water flowing based on the precipitation signals of the Yenisei River Basin. We also want to quantify the air temperature and water temperature signals. We use a microtome to cut thin section of the cores to look at the anatomy of the individual years. These cellular characteristics give us information on shorter timescales the annual ring widths cannot. Measurements of cell wall thickness and area can give us data on the amount of water and temperature of water that has flowed into the Arctic. The Trish project combines proxy tree ring records and wood anatomy findings with a water balance model to help scientists understand how these feedbacks influence Arctic amplification. Understanding how long these impacts may occur will allow for humans to adapt to the changing conditions.